Hey guys, how's it going? It's 8-Bit Eric. So today's video, I'm going to talk about the Google Stadia situation that was just happening yesterday. They announced they'll be seizing operations and it was kind of a trending topic. I didn't get to kind of make a video about it or anything like that. When I was streaming last night, people wanted to know my thoughts and I was like, all right, we'll go ahead. We'll talk about the Google Stadia situation with them shutting down. My thoughts on Google Stadia as a whole and even cloud gaming and how this could potentially be a red flag for cloud gaming services and, and just kind of give my overall all thoughts about that. So yeah, I know this is old news already, but anyways, yesterday, Google Stadia, if you weren't aware, they announced that they're shutting down and users are losing access to their games. This is usually a red flag for people as a reason to not support cloud gaming because they go and they buy all these digital libraries that are only accessible through the cloud and then if the companies decide to cease operations essentially you don't have those games anymore a lot of times this happens even in the past with like video game stores digital stores like playstation network and stuff they'll delist games and they just won't be accessible for long time like like scott pilgrim game people weren't able to buy that anymore or even the pt demo so Digital media has always kind of had like a weird love-hate relationship, not just with gaming, but like movies and stuff like that. Now you're throwing cloud gaming on top of that, and that worries people, especially with like the Nintendo Switch getting a lot of these cloud games coming out, like Resident Evil Village is going to be available through the cloud on the Switch. What happens if and when the Nintendo Switch no longer is supported by Nintendo? Are you going to have access to those cloud games? Is the next console going to be able to play the Switch cloud games? Are you just going to miss out on your money? Are you going to get a refund? The, the questions are all there. But anyways, we're, let's talk about the, the Google Stadia situation for right now. So this article kind of recaps what happened yesterday. So uh, they officially announced that they're shutting down. Users will be getting refunded for their purchases, but they will be losing access to their games. So... You're kind of getting kicked in the nuts, but also getting money back. If you made any purchases on Google Stadia, you're getting refunds for them. And you're not having access to those games at all. Like, it's completely gone. Your Google Stadia controller, if you have one, is going to be completely worthless. It's not going to be able to connect to anything. Kind of sucks. Now, this goes on to say the writing has been on the wall for the Google Stadia for some time, with rumors cropping up a few months ago that the service was looking to shut down. The official Stadia social media came out to deny these claims, but now it's officially happening. So yeah, again, this was no secret. It was albeit confirmed officially. I believe certain uh, Google first-party developers weren't even making stuff for the games anymore. I think at this point it was just like Ubisoft and third-party companies making games for it uh and and we just kind of had that vibe especially when you know it just wasn't even having like any big news uh they didn't have their own like google stadia directs stuff like that anymore so it was it was pretty much a done deal for the longest time continue on this is the bad news is google stadia's users will be losing access to the games and dlc they purchase through the service or claim through the free games program the good news is that they will at least be refunding stadia users for all their purchases made through the google store with most of those refunds expected to be finalized by mid january 2023 that will coincide with the services shutdown date as google has confirmed stadia will be shutting down january 18 2023 so we just basically have until the start of the new year uh, if you're a Google Stadio user to get your refund. So you're on death watch right now. This said the Stadia technology will still be used by Google with the technology set to be in implemented across YouTube, Google Play, and augmented reality projects. Google also plans on making Stadia tech available to other gaming companies. Many employees who have been working with the Stadia team will be relocated to other departments at Google. So Google's big enough of a company to where they're just taking this as a wash. They'll find a way to use the tech for something else, uh, you know, albeit if it's some kind of like other hardware that they develop. Companies like Google and Microsoft make and cancel shit all the time. Unfortunately, the consumers fall victim to it, like anybody that was supporting Stadia, which initially, let me be honest, I thought it was cool. I almost 
pre-ordered it and got the thing. I thought the whole concept of cloud gaming, playing anywhere as long as you have a controller, was a cool idea in theory. And I think it's ahead of its time. I know there's still some people... I saw it last night on my live stream. Some people say they don't understand why anybody would support a cloud when, you know, like, for example, with Xbox, they have the X cloud. Just install the game. Why do you have to play it through the cloud? Well, I use X cloud. I use it a lot, especially with Game Pass. If I'm interested in checking a game out, I'll play it through the cloud. If I like it enough on Game Pass, I will download it. That's because Game Pass is already there for me. It's something that I'm already paying for as part of a subscription service to something that I already have. It's an extra added feature. Same thing with PlayStation Premium uh, Plus Extras. It has the um, cloud gaming on it now that you can use. That is a feature. It's not a sole experience. With Google Stadia, it was a little bit different. They didn't have a console. They didn't have any kind of device besides the controller and being able to use Chromecast and connect that way. And I think in theory, that's where they messed up a lot on it. I feel that you have to have an, a, dev a device to at least be able to install files for consumers to not be burned by the cloud. I think the cloud tech is still a little too early. It's a way ahead of its time. It's still not polished. But with the xCloud, it's different. I can go on to Game Pass right now and play Assassin's Creed Origins through the cloud, find out if I like it or not, and at no extra cost or extra risk, install it on my Xbox. Or if I go on a hotel trip, like if I go to a vacation, I go to a hotel, I can play it on my tablet or my my controller with my cell phone or anything. It's almost like remote play. So I, I support the way xCloud works a lot more than Stadia works. I know some people might be like, well, what? that's stupid. What's the difference? People play games differently. I just feel that Google Stadia at the beginning never had had it correct. You know, at least Xbox has where you can play like an actual device. You can have it to your library. Um, you know what I mean? Like there's different options. It's it's different. So Google Stadia did have a pretty solid beginning. I think they had like Red Dead, Mortal Kombat, Destiny, uh, some Ubisoft titles. They had a, a, a select uh, variety of games that were pretty good initially, but they just never really uh, hit the mark. So... You know, the fact that they're giving refunds for their purchases and I think even the hardware, if I'm not mistaken, is good. But losing access to games completely that you own originally just kind of sucks. And it's a good reminder of the downside of digital gaming uh, or even, you know, owning movies digitally and stuff like that. There's always going to be that hesitant. Uh, for me, I do a little bit of both. If I like a game good enough, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking buy it, you know. I'll double dip. For the most part, if it's digital, I wait for a good sale. I don't usually do like day one digital or whatever. I'll wait for sale. If it's a game I really want, I'll buy it physically. Uh, but Game Pass and PlayStation Plus is where I experience most of my digital stuff. And like I said, it's part of a subscription service to where even though I'm not technically owning the games, I'm paying for the subscription service for games with gold. Uh, being able to play games on the internet, Game Pass on top of that, um, Game Pass PC. So it's just a feature that I understand that it's not going to technically be mine. You know, it, it, to me, that just seems a little bit more reasonable that if Google Stadia would have had the Stadia stuff as part of an overall package of, of subscription services, like, like, like if Amazon, I, I don't know if it was Luna. Luna's not part of their Prime, but if they had... Amazon Luna gaming as part of like the prime and you know, you get prime video and, and all that. I think that would be a little bit more reasonable than, than making people shell out per a game, you know, like, like game pass and X cloud, you get whatever the library is right there and you're not paying individual prices for games. Could you imagine buying like four $40 games and having them only through the cloud when I'm just paying one price for game pass like 15 bucks a month and I could download and play whatever I want through the cloud. That seems much more reasonable for a cloud gaming service, in my opinion. Uh, but I still do support, uh, you know, physical gaming whenever I can. So in an update from today, you can see that the storefront for Google Stadia is already removed. They're working pretty fast on that. You know, 
the end is Im- imminent, as it says. So it's already shut it down following the announcement. So, yeah, you're not going to be able to play on PC, Android TV, Chromecast, all that. They're going to start giving you refunds. So, damn, it says now after three years of being available, they announced a closure. I didn't even know it was already three years. That was a fast fucking three years. And this recaps that there was rumors of Stadia being shut down as early as 2021. I remember kind of vaguely going over an article about that. Um, but yeah, the storefront is already r- removed. So this move uh, definitely is like, a, hey, we mean serious business. Again, with uh, with that, it's a wash, you know, as far as like that goes. It don't bug Google that they had to end this. It, it, they're used to shit like this all the time. Um, I'm even hearing reports. There's a report and I'm going to pull up this article right here. That Google, you know, one one thing about it also is that they didn't really have any heavy hitting exclusives. You know, it was mostly third party games like the Rockstar stuff, Ubisoft. But apparently they canceled a Hideo Kojima Stadia exclusive game because it was single player. Who cares? It, it would have been an exclusive hit that would have sold. You know how many people are like Kojima fucking like Marks? So this was supposedly going to be a Death Stranding follow up uh, and that since it was single player and narrative driven, they didn't want it to be a Google exclusive game. So they said a report from Google news outlet 95 Google claims that Hideo Kojima had been working with Google on a Death Stranding game. The game was reportedly set to be an exclusive single player experience from the Stadia, seeing a departure from Death Stranding's asynchronous multiplayer element. According to the report, Stadia doubted the viability of single-player games moving forward and shelved the project after seeing early mock-ups in 2020. Kojima was reportedly excited to work with the potential of the cloud on the Death Stranding follow-up. So, I have no idea. This says canceling a Stadia exclusive project would confirm rumors from last year that they passed on a collaboration with Kojima. I I think maybe they just saw the writing on the wall back then already that it wouldn't be worth the resources and the time to develop that game. Uh, I think hear me out. What's going to happen is since Kojima is kind of working with Xbox. Now we're just going to see whatever the, the follow up for death stranding is on Xbox straight up the game that he was planning with the use of the cloud. We're going to see it on the X cloud or game pass or something like that. Uh, if they're going to be allowing the Stadia technology to be used by other companies, I think Microsoft is going to take advantage of it somehow or some way, especially because both Sony and Microsoft are still dipping their toes into the cloud. I think they're doing it a little bit better. I think I think Xbox is doing it much better than Google could and even Amazon. But this was just a mess of a situation. Uh, again, I'm not against the cloud. I like the way that Xbox has it as a feature that's included in the subscription that you're paying for. And it's just one price, the game pass price, the Xbox game pass ultimate price. I don't have to pay per fucking game to play games on the cloud. And and I could do it on several devices. I think it's great. And yeah, that's how I personally feel about it. But yeah, Google stadio, we saw that coming a mile away. I don't know about you guys, but thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. And we're coming into the month of October. I'm excited. I'll see you next video.